This series will attempt to predict and provide a wish list for Frontier's upcoming game, Planet Zoo. The conditions and probability of animals chosen will follow a guideline explained at the beginning of the first video. Be sure to watch the previous videos of this series to keep up to date with the entire wish list and predictions. In our final video of the predictions and wishlist series involving biomes, we cover the alpine biome. The alpine biome occurs across every single continent, and since mountains can be found in different regions, they often share a multitude of different features present in other biomes, such as montane forest, alpine grasslands, and meadows, or even desert. The alpine biome is known for its rugged and broken terrain, having a cool high altitude climate, and if high enough can have seasonal snow cover as well. Some notable alpine regions of the world include the North American Cordillera, which features such ranges as the Rockies and the Cascades, the Andes of South America, the Alps in Europe, the Ethiopian Highlands in Africa, and the tallest and most extensive of them all, the Tibetan Plateau, which features such ranges as the Hindu Kush and Himalayas. Of course, the most successful group of the big cats, the leopards, also appear in the alpine biome. The Persian leopard is an endangered variant inhabiting Eurasia from the Caucasus to Afghanistan, preferring mountainous and steep regions with ample vegetation. They are most abundant in Iran, especially around the northern highlands, but global populations number less than 1300 individuals, and thus this leopard is one of the rarer subspecies. Here, the Persian leopard has developed an expertise at hunting the alpine animals within its range, such as wild goat, mouflon, gazelles, boars and deer species. They also willingly attack livestock and thus they are persecuted heavily for it. The leopard's agility allow it to climb trees and traverse tricky terrain, rendering them apex predators in these alpine regions. Habitat destruction from the removal of forest and encroachment of humans onto mountainous areas hurts the leopard dearly, as it performs poorly on the open steppe. The closely related Indian leopard suffers many of the same threats, with the majority of its population now residing in the Himalayas. In India proper, much of its distribution is extremely patchy and fragmented, preferring highlands and mountainous regions, but also reside in woodlands and the savannah. It is interesting to note the Indian leopard pretty much mirrors the distribution of the more lowland Bengal tiger, avoiding competition. Around 12 to 14,000 Indian leopards are believed to still be alive in the wild, warranting a vulnerable conservation status. In India, the leopard preys on deer, nilgai, hares, peafowl, and primates. Both subspecies are unlikely as the Savannah African Leopard would be the expected variant to represent the species in the game, but both are interchangeable as they inhabit similar regions in similar environments. Plain Zebra has been confirmed for the game, and the Gravy Zebra has been covered in our desert video. The third and last zebra species is the Mountain Zebra inhabiting alpine regions of South Africa and Namibia. It consists of two subspecies. The Cape Mountain Zebra is the nominate example, distributed further south in the South African Great Escarpment area in the Cape Province. Here they roam on the montane slopes and plateaus, foraging selectively in the rich alpine grassland in small herds. The Mountain Zebra is distinguishable from other zebras with its dewlap, with the Cape subspecies featuring the largest out of the two. Cape Mountain Zebra also feature prominent brownish tinge on their muzzle. They also feature a white belly similar to the Gravy Zebra. Cape Mountain Zebra were on the verge of extinction, having been deemed endangered with less than 140 surviving at one point in time, as a result of widespread habitat loss and hunting. Protection campaigns has brought modern numbers back up to 2,700. Hartman's Mountain Zebra is identifiable from a less pronounced dewlap, and it features buff undertones in its white sections of its colouring, giving an impression of it being covered in dirt. Hartman's mountain zebra are much more common, found in the Namibian escarpments of the Namib Desert. The Hartman's fuss endures generally dry and rocky conditions in high altitudes, less productive lands than the Cape Mountain Zebra, and even more so than the savannah that supports the huge congregations of plain zebra. Both the mountain and plain zebra have strong confluence in zoos, often showcased together. As a result, it would not be surprising to see another zebra species added, with the mountain zebra being the most likely candidate compared to the Grevies, and thus both the Cape and Hartmans are interchangeably possible. The Andean condor is a new world vulture and the largest bird of prey by wingspan and weight. In the entire realm of flying birds, its wingspan is only exceeded by four species of albatross and pelican. Andean condors feature the famous naked head of vultures, coloured a black plumage with grey streaks on its wings. Its most defining feature is a fluffy white neck scarf. 
males also feature a dark red comb. The condor ranges widely over the South American Andes, appearing more commonly in the southern extents where their keen eyesight allows them to spot dead carrion, venturing into the open Patagonian plains or barren Atacama Desert as well. It is in the north where they are extremely rare, seeding competition to more specialized rainforest birds of prey, where their eyesight proves useless in such dense foliage. The Andean condor undergoes public misconception with farmers, as they are believed to hunt livestock, and of course this is untrue. Resultingly, they are persecuted and like all condors, they are adapted to low mortality rates and thus have very low reproductive rates. Andean condors are very common in zoos, however, and should be noted as a possible inclusion. The South American camelids are a group of camel relatives inhabiting the Andean alpine regions. Two wild varieties were domesticated by indigenous peoples and thus there are now four species today. The llama is essentially the icon of Andean culture, having been domesticated since Incan civilization for meat, wool, and as a pack animal. Like camels being used in Eurasian civilizations to traverse treacherous regions such as deserts and mountains over there, the llama was used in the same regard to allow trade and supply transport through the Andean mountains. Furthermore, their usefulness can be compared to the Western world's usage of sheep, providing a sustainable meat source and durable wool for clothing. Llamas have been crossbred and hybridized with the other South American camelids to produce many breeds for specialized purposes. And although most of the continent has moved on to industrialized farming of cattle and pigs for meat and usage of motorized vehicles, llamas still provide a crucial food source and transport method for rural and impoverished communities in the Andes. The alpaca was domesticated at the same time as the llama, but specifically for their wool fiber. As a result, it does not require the strength of a pack animal and thus alpacas are considerably smaller than llamas. Due to this specialization, they also feature a much more dense wool coat reminiscent of sheep. Native to Peru, their herding range has extended to encompass a large section of the Middle Andes, but half the global population of alpacas still reside in that country. Alpaca fiber is an increasingly common commodity in the textile trade famed for their high quality and as a result the animal has been imported into every other continent besides Antarctica. Alpaca farms are now a common sighting in Australia, United States and in Europe. Alongside the llama, the alpaca is often showcased in public farms but may not have the prestige required to be an exotic zoo animal. Still though, they often appear in petting zoos or children friendly areas of larger zoos as they are docile. Both are still expected species and the two can be added together or be interchangeable. The wild ancestor of the domesticated llama is the guanaco, widespread over the alpine and steppe of the southern Andes and the grasslands of Patagonia. Guanacos grow a thick fur fiber that helps keep them warm in sometimes below freezing temperatures in its environment. They often live in dry areas such as the Atacama Desert with little water and are fleet-footed on rocky terrain. It was these traits that resulted in its domestication some 6,000 years ago and transformed it into the modern llama. Wild guanaco populations number some 400 to 600,000 individuals and thus they are a very numerous herding animal over its range. Similarly, the vicuña is the wild ancestor of the domesticated alpaca. Their smaller size but denser fur allows them to brave colder temperatures and are correspondingly found in higher altitudes of the Andes. Vicuñas were domesticated for this very reason, the dense thick fur cultivated into alpaca wool we know today. Vicuñas and guanacos are abundant throughout their range with little concern for conservation, however this is only recent. Vicuñas were actually endangered for most of the 20th century due to overhunting, but are well in control today. Conversely, they are more appealing as a zoological specimen because of the fact they are wild, instead of the domesticated variants, but guanacos and vicuña numbers in captivity are tiny compared to llamas and alpacas. Despite this, both species still pertain likely chances as wild variants, and it would actually would not be surprising to see all four species added. The clipspringer is a small antelope found virtually all over the highlands, alpine, and mountainous regions of sub-Saharan Africa. Sturdy, nimble, and agile, clipspringers are expert climbers, often described as the African wild goats, because of their hooves are adapted to be tactile to the surface of rocks. They are found from the Ethiopian highlands, across the Albertine Rift to the Kenyan highlands, down to the Drakensberg Mountains in South Africa. In the west, they mimic the mountain zebra's range, extending across the Namib Plateau and the Great Escarpment of South Africa. Although rare for humans to see them in the wild, they are adequately abundant with little fear for conservation. 
because they inhabit such remote and inaccessible terrain and are too small sized to yield sufficient meat, they are largely ignored by poachers. Furthermore, they are one of the few antelopes that do not compete with livestock as a result of its habitat. Clipspringers make great zoo animals because of their interaction with custom-made rocky exhibits. Their small size also makes them somewhat low-maintenance animals and as a result their captive representation should allow for a possible chance of inclusion. Endemic to the Tibetan Plateau, the Tibetan antelope or Chiru is a medium-sized antelope variety that forms herds of hundreds strong, grazing on alpine pastures of Tibet. This species adorns a woolly coat with whitish brown colour, males sporting large and slightly curved horns. Their fur of the animal is renowned. Long guard hairs protect a silky undercoat of fibrous material that is highly prized on the continent for its softness, lightweight and insulative qualities. As a result, massive hunting of this animal occurred in the 20th century, with its underwall transformed into the luxurious Persian chatouche that fetched hefty prices in European and South Asian markets. The Tibetan antelope was declared endangered for most of this time, but has since then been protected effectively by the Chinese government. The population of Chiru currently stand at around 150,000, but its trend is thought to be decreasing. Thus, it has been upgraded to a near threatened status. An iconic animal of the Tibetan plateau, it however performs poorly in captivity, with many attempts to integrate it into Chinese zoos. Their need for large expanses of land and migratory behavior at high altitudes to fulfill feeding and breeding requirements often results in poor survival rates in captivity. Tibetan antelope would be a welcome addition but represents nothing more than a possibility for these reasons. Mountain Niala are endangered antelope restricted to the Bayo Mountains in the Ethiopian highlands. Niala are members of the Tragolephus genus and therefore share genetic relations and similar appearances with kudus and elands, which alongside the sister species, the lowland Niala, are savannah dwelling animals. Mountain Niala on the other hand are one of the few African alpine antelopes, but their range is now extremely restricted due to the cultivation of pristine land for agriculture. Niala have been pushed further and further to higher altitudes as they are reclusive and tend to avoid human activity. Although the animal is culturally valued in Ethiopia, they are illegally poached, affected by trophy hunting practices, and their calves are preyed upon by local farm dogs. Mountain Nialas are otherwise too similar to kudus and elands we covered in the savannah video, and are only mentioned for their precarious conservation status, with only a few hundred individuals left in the wild. However, due to strict export policies of animals by the Ethiopian government, no mountain Niala appear in zoos, so they are both extremely rare in the wild and in captivity. Resultingly, they are unlikely to be considered. Wild yaks are ancestors of the domestic yak, large cattle-like bovines adapted to the freezing temperatures and high altitude climate of the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau. Wild yaks are descendants of the giant aurochs and thus are large size themselves, second only to the Indian bison. Heavily built and bulky animals, they are covered with shaggy hair over a dense woolly undercoat reminiscent of musk ox. They roam over the alpine plains largely eating grasses, shrubs, herbs, but also mosses and lichen. Like the bison of the grasslands and the musk ox of the tundra, wild yak form herds several hundred strong, but males are usually solitary. Yaks were sought after for their domestication, the same way llamas were in the Andes, except yaks are more built for transport and as a beast of burden, although their large meat content provides a substantial food source for rural communities. Less than 10,000 individuals remaining in the wild means the wild yak is vulnerable. Interbreeding with the domesticated varieties further implicates problems, but they are now protected in India and China. Although they are essentially an alpine bison, their likelihood is high because of both wild and domesticated varieties appearing readily in zoos. Gazelles are adaptable and successful, found in a range of biomes and the cuviers is no different. Distributed in alpine woodlands on the Atlas Mountains in Northwest Africa. Cuviers gazelle is the darkest gazelle species, an adaptation that provides counter shading to confuse predators in this mountainous environment. Cuvier's gazelles are actually one of the rarer species of gazelle due to overhunting, habitat loss and livestock competition and the fact it was declared endangered very late. So far only Tunisia has provided protected refuge for the Cuvier's gazelle but this encompasses a small fraction of its total distribution and population. Very few examples of this species are in captivity. Another alpine gazelle consideration is the aptly named mountain gazelle. This species inhabits dry and desert-like conditions in the Levant Mountains, particularly over the Golan Heights, Judean and Lebanon mountain ranges. 
A smaller population resides in the Nur Mountains of Turkish Hatay province. Since both females and males grow horns, mountain gazelles have been poached for this reason. They also suffer widespread habitat fragmentation and overpredation from dogs and jackals. Since 1993, they have been protected in Israel but very little actual enforcement. Like the cuviers, very little mountain gazelles are exhibited in zoos. As a result, both species would be highly unlikely. Cougars are the most widely distributed large mammal of the Americas, and it possibly has the greatest extent of any large cat in the world. Despite their size, however, they are much more closely related to small felines such as the domestic cat rather than the traditional big five cats of the Panthera genus. Cougars hold the world record for the animal assigned the most names. Mountain lion is commonly used mainly in North America, puma in Spanish or Portuguese speaking communities, while some other common references include catamount or just simply panther. The cougar is considered a generalist as in it is able to adapt to almost every environment and biome situated in the Americas. As a specialist climber and agility expert, they do however prefer areas with dense underbrush such as shrubland or steep areas, rocky terrain, canyons and escarpments which makes them particularly common in alpine areas. Cougars are ambush predators and will hunt anything they can catch from insects all the way to ungulates twice its size. They are usually not apex predators though and are dominated by the jaguar in South America, grey wolves and bears in North America. Still, their success in the middle tier ecological niche as a predator has made them by far the most successful mammal in the Americas, historically distributed over virtually the entire North and South American continents up until the tundra line. Since European colonization, they were considered destructive pests and most of the eastern cougars have been extirpated besides the Florida panther. In Central and South America, the cougar is well protected, but permit hunting still occurs in USA and Canada. Wild numbers are still high and the cougar is still extensively distributed to warrant a low concern status, but its overall population is declining. Almost every major North American zoo exhibits a cougar of some kind and they are common outside the Americas as well. Their public familiarity will ultimately deserve them a place as an expected inclusion. Bears are also common in alpine areas with several displaying overlap with other biomes we have covered. Spectacle bears, for instance, mentioned in our rainforest video, resides in the Andean cloud forest and can be considered an alpine bear. The Syrian brown bear is one of the southern populations of the Eurasian brown bear, coloured distinctively with a coat much lighter than its northern counterparts to provide better camouflage in its alpine environments. It usually prefers dense woodlands and avoids open steppe areas. The Syrian brown bear is an apex predator top of the food chain in the Caucasus Mountains, the Armenian Highlands, and the Iranian Plateau, where its only equal contemporary is the Persian Leopard. Displaying typical bear tenacity and adaptability, Syrian brown bears engage in hunting mammalian prey, they seek out honey and consume insects, but vegetation still makes up a major part of their diet. At a first glance, the Syrian brown bear appears to be widely distributed, but in fact, it is a very rare animal, with limited contemporary studies confirming its true range or population. It was believed to have been extinct in Israel, Jordan and Lebanon, but evidence of bears returning to the Lebanese mountains may indicate recovery in those areas. They are persecuted intensely for livestock predation, they suffer from continuous habitat loss, and no real conservation program has been implemented. Despite this, their rarity in the wild and distinctive colouring makes them decently appreciated in zoos. There is a notable collection in German and Austrian zoos. The other southern brown bear varieties occur in the Himalayas, one of which is the Himalayan brown bear, distributed over the Eurasian alpine region of the Himalaya, the Hindu Kush, Pamir and Tin Shan mountains. These bears inhabit altitudes higher than Syrian bears but prefer open valleys and pastures, considered the least arboreal of all the bears. Himalayan bears are also one of the few temperate brown bears that actually hibernate, a result of very cold winter temperatures in its environment. Omnivorous, these bears mostly consume grasses, roots and bulbs, fruits and berries, but also forage for insects and sometimes hunt large mammals such as sheep and goat varieties. Considered vulnerable, Himalayan brown bears are even rarer than Syrian bears and in some parts of their range on the verge of imminent extinction. Their organs are highly prized in the medicinal market, whilst their pelts are lucrative in this region. An estimated 15 to 30 animals reside in the Hindu Kush, their most sensitive population, and this is considered critically endangered. 
Himalayan brown bears have often been cited as the reason for explaining the Yeti or abominable snowman and retain some cultural value with the indigenous people of Tibet. Both species are interchangeable as candidates for an alpine brown bear variety but ultimately they are both unlikely. Finally we have the Tibetan blue bear. Extremely rare and almost mythical, Tibetan blue bears were historically ranged over the eastern Tibetan plateau but remaining wild populations are speculated to be in Bhutan. It is possible the Tibetan blue bear is extinct in the wild, but an expedition in 2013 by the Nature Conservancy spotted a lone individual. Alongside the Gobi bear, which has 30 individuals left, the Tibetan blue bear is among the most critically endangered of all bear species. They are named for their greyish and white bands on their brown fur that resemble shades of blue in some light conditions. Difficult terrain and limited funding results in little knowledge about this bear species, and as such most of the information about it is speculative, informed estimations at best. It is considered very shy and reclusive and thus seldom observed. Like the Himalayan brown bear, Tibetan blue bears were hunted extensively for their bile in their gallbladders, highly prized in Chinese medicine. For these reasons alone, because the animal is so mysterious and considered a prestigious asset in the awfully limited amount of zoo appearances it does occur in, Tibetan blue bears have maybe a possible chance to be considered. Canids also appear in alpine environments. Here we will explore several that are adapted to alpine conditions. As Africa's most endangered carnivore, the Ethiopian wolf is a conservationally significant canid restricted to fragmented distributions in the Ethiopian highlands. A slender, chestnut red coloured canid reminiscent of North America's coyote, this wolf is threatened due to its very specific diet and thus very specific habitat requirements. With its long muzzle, the Ethiopian wolf exclusively hunts African alpine rodents, which are themselves exclusively found in alpine grasslands and plains, land that has been encroached upon by human settlement and livestock grazing. Interaction with other canid species often leads to hybridization and competition with feral dogs, golden wolves, jackals and other canids puts further pressure on populations. But by far the most dangerous and destructive threat is the outbreak of rabies which has decimated 75% of the Ethiopian wolf's population. With around 400 individuals and experiencing a dramatic declining trend, Ethiopian wolves are perhaps the canid that is most likely to go extinct and with that benefits from public awareness and only recently have competent conservation efforts begun. Like most Ethiopian animals, the country's animal export policy prevents any Ethiopian wolves from being showcased internationally, which may hurt its chances of appearing in the game, but it still pertains a likely chance. Isolated in the Iberian Peninsula, the Iberian wolf has formed a distinct population of grey wolves inhabiting the highlands of Iberia and is currently the largest wolf population in Western Europe. The Iberian wolf is coloured similarly to the grey wolf but has a notably smaller frame and displays a noticeable white stripe on its snout. Wolves have been distributed over much of Europe in prehistory but declined aggressively during the 18th century when persecution was heightened as a result of their perceived threat to farming. The remaining population in Iberia lives in several distributions including the Sierra Morena in the south but their largest range encompasses the Cantabrian mountains and Galician highlands to the northwest of the peninsula. Iberian wolves have a vital ecological role as they help keep wild boar populations stable and thus prevent infestation, but as a highly adaptable grey wolf subspecies they also hunt deer, ibexes and fish. Their predation of livestock means the Iberian wolf is still legally hunted in Spain despite its increasingly vulnerable status. Less than 2,000 wolves are thought to remain in the wild. In captivity, Iberian wolves are sourced extensively for showcase in Western European zoos but very little of them occur outside the continent. Interchangeable with it is the Italian wolf. This grey wolf subspecies has been isolated in parts of the Western Alps and the Apennine Mountains that run through central Italy. The Italian wolf is a small subspecies that is coloured more yellowish than its parent lineage. Like the Iberian wolf, this isolated population is considered vulnerable and numbers less than 1,800 individuals, but its range and population is actually increasing due to its well protected status in Italy. The wolf is expected to expand its range towards the Swiss Alps where it shows resilience to cold, high altitude climates despite its lack of long or thick fur. Italian wolves feature prominently in Italian culture. According to Roman legend, the brothers Romulus and Remus who founded the city of Rome were raised by a female wolf. 
highly revered but alongside the Iberian wolf they are ultimately two unlikely species as a result of being subspecies of the grey wolf. These western European varieties are interchangeable. Wolves even appear in the highest mountain peaks of the world, the Himalayas and the corresponding Tibetan plateau. Here the Tibetan wolf roams. Nepalese populations of this wolf are often dubbed the Himalayan wolf but studies have shown both these specimens are genetically identical. These wolves occur above the tree line and rarely venture below certain altitudes. Here they utilize their typical wolf stamina and pace to hunt alpine antelope over vast distances. Colored pale and exhibiting a thicker and woollier than temperate grey wolf counterparts, the Tibetan wolf has obvious adaptations for it to thrive in alpine environments. Wolves accounted for 60% of livestock losses in its range and thus persecution is intense, but in 2015 China outlawed hunting of the animal. Today the wolf is very rare due to its remoteness and correspondingly very little specimens are found in captivity. Yet again another unlikely grey wolf specimen but worth a mention for this alpine biome. The doll is an Asiatic wild canid variety that inhabits various mountainous regions in southern and southeast Asia. Although labelled as the continent's wild dog, the doll has several anatomical features that distinguish it as a distant member of the Canini tribe and thus it is not quite closely related to Canis species but shares strong relations with African jackals and wild dogs. The doll's small size, colouring and behavioural traits renders comparisons to a sort of Asian red fox. However, the doll is much more social and forms hierarchical pack structures. Inhabiting mountainous areas where they prefer alpine meadows and steppe, in the southern extent of their range, especially in Indochina and Sumatra, they inhabit tropical montane cloud forests. Although not very fast due to its delta body plan, it possesses great endurance and packs can chase prey for hours until exhaustion. In this way, doll packs can hunt and kill prey much larger than them. Deer and alpine goats are common varieties, but generally the doll is an opportunist and will hunt variably. For the most part, dolls are outcompeted by every carnivore larger than them. Tigers, leopards and wolf packs will routinely dispossess carcasses. Very limited doll hunting occurs since they do not pose threats to livestock, nor do they offer much meat or hide content. Instead, habitat destruction and disintegration of its populations are its greatest threat. An estimated around 2,000 individuals are left and thus the doll is rather endangered. It is currently showcased in many western zoos and noted for its tendency to adapt well in captivity. Dolls are a possibility. Arguably one of the most iconic alpine animals is the snow leopard, a species of the panthera genus and thus it is one of the big five cats. Snow leopards occur over most of the Tibetan plateau, the Hindu Kush, the Tian Shan and Altai mountains rarely venturing below 3,000 meters altitude and inhabit broken terrain with little foliage. It is in this environment whereby the snow leopard displays its agility and sure-footedness. A distinctive feline, the snow leopard is colored a grayish brown to white fur, adorning black rosettes. It provides camouflage not only in snow but rocky and mountainous terrain. Like standard leopards, snow leopards are reclusive and solitary. They are specialists at hunting Himalayan sheep and tar wild goats and makor, where it is the only predator that can reasonably traverse the terrain inhabited by these prey sources, but as an opportunistic carnivore will hunt animals such as red pandas or langur monkeys as well. As an apex predator, it is capable of killing everything in its range with the exception of fully grown male yaks. Regarded as an iconic big cat, snow leopards benefit from extensive conservation programs, but its population is still declining due to ongoing poaching for its lucrative pelt and alternative as tiger substitute in Chinese markets. Regardless, there are 600 snow leopards in captivity, making it one of the most common felines exhibited in zoos and suitably attracts much popularity. In conclusion, it is a surely expected species to be showcased in the game. The Galata is a monkey species inhabiting the Ethiopian highlands. Although resembling a baboon, it is technically not part of that genus, although they are closely related. Their behavior, social structure, and adaptable traits are nevertheless comparable to baboons, with the major exception in that they are distributed in alpine environments. Galatas forage over high altitude grasslands where grass provides 90% of their dietary requirements. Thus, they are the only primates that are primarily grazers. At night, they return to cliff edges and rock outcrops to sleep. Although inhabiting a somewhat restricted range with specific habitat requirements, galadas are very abundant and are listed as least concern. 
widely perceived as pests that compete with livestock pastures, Galata populations were halved from 440,000 to 200,000 in the span of 30 years. Their population today is still decreasing and thus may be subject to status re-evaluation in the future. They are also showcased decently in zoos, but overlap with baboons will make this species unlikely. One of the best adapted mammal groups inhabiting the alpine biome is the subfamily Caprinae, consisting of sheep and goats. Their adaptations, especially in relation to their hooves, allow them to live and thrive in rugged terrain typical of this biome, and males of most species adorn spectacular horn growths. Here we will explore several noteworthy candidates of this group. First up is the Himalayan tar, a wild goat that inhabits a narrow stretch of the Himalayas. Sexually dimorphic, males are coloured dark brown and feature a prominent golden mane and well-developed horns. The Himalayan tar grazes over exposed alpine meadows where it often shares its habitat with Baral, Agali and Goral. Due to the remoteness and exhilarating conditions poachers must endure to reach these animals, they are highly prized trophy hunting targets and thus populations have subsequently been introduced into New Zealand, Argentina and United States for this purpose, thriving in those areas' alpine regions. In their home range, hunting is much more devastating, livestock competition even more so, and as such the tar is rendered near threatened due to ongoing population decline. Some examples are in captivity, but not enough reasoning for it to outshine many other notable examples in this group, a final rating of unlikely. Possibly interchangeable with the Himalayan tar is the Baral or Himalayan blue sheep. Barals are widely distributed and abundant, occurring over the entire Tibetan plateau and numbering some 400,000 individuals. A major food source for the snow leopard, the Baral is a typical caprid that adapts well to alpine conditions. The males feature large, curved, ram-like horns that spiral outwards, but little other differentiation is apparent from many other wild goat species. It is worth mentioning as a common animal in this alpine region, but too unlikely to ultimately warrant a place in the game. The chamois is a goat antelope species native to the mountains of Europe and the Caucasus. The western populations occur in and around the European Alps, with smaller pockets in the Carpathians and Transylvanian Mountains and the Balkan Dineric Alps. The eastern population centers around the Caucasus, the Pontic Mountains and the Armenian Plateau. Small but agile, the chamois is abundant across its range and is one of the recognizable and well-known bovines of the European continent. Chamois are regularly hunted for their tasty game meat and their absorbent leather, and since they are relatively numerous, hunting is often a wildlife management practice to keep numbers from becoming problematic. They have even been reintroduced into New Zealand, where they adapt well to the alpine terrain of the islands there and are allowed to be hunted without restriction. In captivity, they are readily showcased, especially in European zoos in high-terrain alpine exhibits, but comparatively to other caprid species, they might be more on the uninteresting side, so it's a possible inclusion. Perhaps one of the more interesting varieties is the markor, sometimes appreciably called the screwhorn goat. It is a defining feature of this goat specimen, with males adorning enormous horn growths in a very defined screw shape. Because of this, it is a fairly recognizable and popular animal, even becoming the national animal of Pakistan, in which it resides here in the Hindu Kush region. But some pockets also inhabit the Kashmir region and parts of Tajikistan. It is believed the Markor is an ancestor to some domesticated goat breeds, such as the Angora goat, which derive from this area. In the wild, they inhabit steep and inaccessible terrain, allowing several stronghold populations to exist without ever coming into contact with humanity, making them an extremely rare wild sighting and a spectacular specimen for exhibiting in zoos. They are considered one of the most challenging game species on the planet for this reason also. However, although they rarely face human-posed threats, their population is thought to be small, only around 5,800 individuals, and coupled with their restrictive and small range, makes them a near-threatened species. As a pinnacle alpine goat variety, they are an expected inclusion. A goat antelope native to the Japanese Isles, the Japanese Cerro is a national symbol of the country and is subject to intense protection. It has had a tumultuous conservational history, almost becoming extinct in the mid-20th century when aggressive overhunting coupled with wartime destruction of its habitat reduced the population to some 2,000 individuals. 
a national movement to save the animal, considered an emblematic symbol of the forest in Japanese culture, has since grown its population to some 100,000 strong, and consequently a least concerned status, one of the greatest reversals of population and status recorded by the IUCN. Today, the Japanese Cerro is so common and numerous, it has ventured outside its preferred alpine habitat to lowland forest regions. Outside the country, it is fairly obscure, but it retains some reputation as an exotic exhibit animal, despite its rare occurrence in zoos, possibly a consideration due to its important conservational history. The American mountain goat is a stalwart in zoos, often exhibited in rocky exhibits where they showcase sure-footedness on otherwise awkward positions they tend to get themselves into. Originally endemic to the Boundary Ranges, the Alaska Range, Mackenzie Mountains, the Cascades and Northern Rocky Mountains, they have since been introduced over the rest of the Rockies and the Olympic Mountains. Despite their name, mountain goats are not true goats, but more goat antelopes, closely related to the Takins of Asia. They are distinctive in that they are coloured in an almost pure white coat of fur. Their horns are apparent, but not significant. They are also the largest mammal species that lives above the tree line in the Americas, only venturing below this during winter migration or to seek out mineral deposits. Noted for their aggressive nature, they often defend themselves well against predators and even humans. Often their size and altitude protects them from most predators, but the cougar is a noted major hunter of the species, nimble enough to navigate the tricky terrain the mountain goat often retreats to. With extensive amounts in captivity, it is a likely addition. The mouflon is an ancestor to all domesticated sheep and occurs in many subspecies, however it is considered vulnerable across its range. The most endangered is the Armenian mouflon, with numbers less than 2,000 in the wild for a multitude of reasons. Habitat loss, hunting and competition with livestock, as well as interbreeding with other mouflon varieties in the region have caused significant pressure on the population and very little effort or willpower is present to save the species. Furthermore, although they exist in some protected reserves and sanctuaries, zoo appearances are minimal. They have however been introduced into Texas, serving as a popular game animal due to its curved horns. Mouflon, and specifically the Armenian mouflon, would perhaps be very unlikely. Ibexes are a famous variety of wild goats. Here we will consider three species. The first is the alpine ibex. It is often just referred to as simply the ibex, and serves as the namesake and archetype of the group. It is distributed in the European Alps, where it is known as the Steinbock in German or Bouquetin in French. Alpine ibex are known for sporting longer grooved horns that curve backwards similar to oryxes or gemsbok, compared to the thick and large horns of the other caprids such as the Marcor or Mouflon. Therefore, they add a uniqueness to the group that is utilised in its popularity as a zoo animal and as a mountain icon. Alpine ibex are very much considered a core alpine animal that is ever-present in zoos. The Nubian ibex is a considerably more threatened species of ibex, inhabiting the Red Sea coast of Africa and Arabia, the Sinai Peninsula and coast of Oman. It inhabits steep terrain in desert arid environments and this often leads to widespread conflict with livestock farming over precious grazing territory. Further hunting pressures and predation has pushed Nubian ibex numbers to 1,200 individuals and a decreasing population trend. Compared to alpine ibex, Nubian ibex horns pertain more exaggerated curvature, with horns of old males almost curving back towards their skulls. By far the most endangered species is the Walia ibex, restricted to the Simian Mountains in the Ethiopian highlands. Here, only 500 individuals remain, having been historically poached and suffered extensive habitat loss where it was at one stage critically endangered. The formation of the Simian Mountains National Park has provided a refuge for some of Ethiopia's most threatened alpine animals and the Walia ibex is no exception. These ibexes display the typical ornate horns similar to their northern relatives, with much similarity to the Nubian variety. Again, as an Ethiopian animal, no captive population exists anywhere in the world. I would consider these three ibex species interchangeable, although the archetype alpine ibex would perhaps be the front runner. Nevertheless, the game should be expected to include at least one ibex species. The takin is a stocky animal that rivals muskox as the largest and heaviest of the caprids, and often cited as a cattle goat due to its similarities with both. Takins are very distinguishable thanks to their usually bright golden fur, although the four subspecies show some variation. 
the lustrous coat of the Golden Takin variety may have been even influenced the legend of the Golden Fleece and Jason and the Argonauts. Its horns also resembled those of cattle or buffalo, rather than the other members of the family. Takin have largely been a rare occurrence in the wild that has grown its mythical reputation. This is due to their low wild populations and slow breeding cycles. Their populations are further pressured by habitat loss and poaching, especially in their Chinese range, for their hide and horns offer substantial compensation in Asian markets. Luckily though, they are highly revered in captivity, showcasing many zoo appearances, and as one of the larger, stockier animals of the Tibetan Alpine region, a likely chance of inclusion. Barbary sheep are named for their endemic region on the Barbary coast of North Africa in which they are distributed, centered around the Atlas Mountains but they also appear extensively over highlands across the Sahara, including the Hoga Mountains and Tadamate Plateau in Algeria, the Tibesti Mountains in Chad and the Red Sea Hills in Egypt. And since these areas are essentially arid, the Barbary sheep can be equally considered a desert animal. They are also widely referred to as the Ayudad. Despite its widespread distribution, it is a rare animal in the wild, numbering less than 10,000 individuals with a declining trend. Intense hunting, especially since it is a source of meat for isolated desert communities and livestock competition, has put pressure on numbers whilst ever-increasing desertification and frequency of extreme droughts has made its habitat unsuitable. Barbary sheep are common in zoos as they adapt well to captivity. They tolerate different terrain including flat surfaces and do not require detailed exhibits to thrive. However, they are rather dull looking and not that differentiable from standard sheep or goat species and will probably suffer competition from much more interesting animals, making it an unlikely addition. A better alternative is the American Bighorn Sheep, distributed over the Rocky Mountains down to Baja, California, where it is distributed over alpine areas but also ventures into canyon gorges and cliff faces of the Badlands region. Bighorn sheep are named for their so-called big horns, and it rivals those of the mouflon, but it is not as spectacular as other Asian variants. Bighorn sheep populations historically peaked to the millions and alongside American bison, were one of the most numerous mammalian varieties on the continent, providing crucial food sources for the Native American tribes in the West. By the 20th century, overhunting, livestock competition, and introduced diseases through colonialization ravaged the population to several thousand. Today numbers have recovered substantially and controlled hunting is permitted. The bighorn sheep has strong ties to Native American culture and it is widely respected as a fundamental animal in North American zoos, popular for its elegant curving horns. As a result, one can expect the bighorn sheep to be implemented into the game. The giant panda is possibly one of the most famous animals on earth, a basal bear family member distinctive due to its black and white coloring and as a symbol of conservation. Inhabiting the Tibetan foothills in Sichuan province, the giant panda is an exclusive bamboo consumer and has an extremely restricted range due to this strict dietary requirement, which often makes it especially sensitive to habitat loss. However, as it is one of the best recognized mammalian species, as a symbol of not only China as a nation, but also conservation in general, most notably as the logo of the World Wildlife Fund, there is much effort by the host nation to protect the species. Immense undertakings in breeding programs and leasing of panda specimens to international zoos have brought giant pandas to be exhibited in almost every corner of the globe and thus available to a large percentage of the zoo going public. Giant pandas are also notorious for low reproductivity, slow breeding cycles and high infant mortality. As such, the species requires captive breeding to utilize technologies such as artificial insemination. Protection of their wild range and strong willpower to enforce conservation measures means that despite their restricted range and low population of 1,800 individuals in the wild and 268 in captivity, their population is on the rise and it is considered only a vulnerable species. It would definitely be an obvious expected species and one of the core frontrunners to be in the game upon release. This subspecies was officially recognized in 2005, consisting of a population of pandas restricted to the Qingling Mountains of central China, cut off from their primary distribution some 300,000 years ago. The Qingling panda displays a distinctive brown and gray coat that differs to the black and white of the nominate giant panda varieties. It is believed inbreeding over many generations has cemented the mutative gene responsible. 
Inbreeding has caused many other problems to this population of pandas, with many individuals of this variety displaying weak immune systems, health issues, and dental abnormalities. As a result, kingling pandas are on the average smaller, lighter, and live far shorter than giant pandas, with only one individual surviving infancy in captivity, and that individual is currently the only kingling panda specimen in captivity. With two to three hundred individuals in the wild, it represents a much more endangered variety of panda, but like the giant pandas range, the Kingling Mountains is presently quite well protected. A possible skin alternative for the giant panda, otherwise Kingling Pandas are probably too unlikely to be added as their own separate species. We will cover two deer species to finish off today's video. The Kashmir Stag is a critically endangered alpine deer restricted to the Dachigam National Park in the Kashmir, a forested alpine region part of the Himalayan foothills. Known as the Hangul in South Asia, it is a subspecies of the elk that has been isolated in this region for some time. Its population was estimated at 5,000 at the turn of the 20th century. However, today numbers are as low as 150 or even 100 due to habitat destruction, livestock competition, poaching and in recent times the increased militancy in the area as the region is disputed between Pakistan and India. The animal population is now on its last legs and at a critical stage, surviving within a 141 km squared area of the Dachigam National Park. Considered a magnificent deer specimen due to its spectacular antlers, conservation efforts have only recently begun with intentions to breed the animal in captivity, although no single captive specimen exists anywhere in the world. Expected extinction is imminent and as such it deserves a possible status as one of Earth's most critically endangered mammals. Finally, we have the Thorold's deer, roaming over the eastern Tibetan plateau and is identifiable through its white patches around the mouth, earning its other common name, the white lip deer. Thorold's deer was one of several Asiatic specimens discovered by the Polish-Russian explorer Nikolai Shavolsky in his travels through the region, where it was noted as living higher than the tree line in alpine meadows and plains. Thorold's deer today is considered the highest altitude deer in the world. Although its range is large, its populations are scattered, suffering mostly from livestock competition as farmers encroach on the previously pristine land of its isolated habitat. As a result, it is now considered vulnerable. Their remoteness also renders them a difficult animal to study with very limited appearances in zoos. Competition will be fierce with the temperate forest deer species, of which there are more threatened and more notable examples, so the Thorold's deer will ultimately be an unlikely inclusion. That ends our video for today and wraps up our biome predictions and wish list. For our next videos, we will take a different route as we explore some of the animals that require showcasing in aviaries, aquariums, or terrariums. The choice is yours and you can vote in the poll for your next video. As always, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed today's content and I'll catch you guys later.